life on the road is a grind and, and you know everybody look at your schedule and say hey man you go into Ohio State you get to travel to the University of Florida you get to go to Milwaukee which is all great but at the end of the day these are business trips really you know we get to the uh, hotel uh, we get something to eat we'll get some rest pretty much we got to go to practice from practice you know we might do a little film work get something to eat, get some rest. We play these type of programs for a couple of reasons. We're a low major program. Marquette don't want to return a home game to Savannah State, so in order to get Savannah State to come out to Milwaukee and uh, not give us a home game, so they pay us a guarantee. You do a lot with $90,000 at Savannah State University. I mean, that could be three uh, low-level jobs. And that's uniforms, that's scholarship money, that's equipment, that's a lot. That's just one of the, what we call the necessary evil of being a Division I coach in the MEI conference or what we would say are mid to low major programs. A lot of people do it, so it helps finance the uh, program. Market is a worthy opponent. I guess a program like us, the opportunity to play against uh, high major programs. And you want to see how your kids compete under pressure. We got to get out this gate this first four minutes. Make sure we are boxing out, all right? If you make a mistake, no big deal. What's next? It's no problem making mistakes, but I get pissed off when one mistake leads to a second mistake. So if we make a mistake, what's next? They make a basket, what's next? Hey guys, you know we're gonna be in a fight. So if you're in a fight, you're gonna get some hits. But we got to get, we got to take some hits and we got to give some hits. A lot of energy, win on three. One, two, three, win! Let's go, man, let's go! I believe every time a HBCU or a Savannah State step out on the floor against a big school, everybody is looking at you like, we should beat this team. We should beat this team by 30. When we come to these big schools, I don't want our team to seem like we're just a pushover. We had a good season last year. We got 21 wins. We got to get better. We had 21 last year. We got to get 22, 23, always getting better. Lewis between the rings, everything 30 feet away. Cedric Smith lobs over the top and they throw it too far. Front court Vander Blue in from the right, baseline to the basket, floats it high, up and in about a four footer. Lewis in the lane, underneath wide open is Hassan as he stuffs it. We're not going into the game like it's just a good experience. We try to just play this game just to play against one of these big teams, get our name out. We actually playing to win. The biggest challenge is really just making sure your team is mentally ready because um, it's easy to look on film and say you're going to stop this and that, but to actually get out there and uh, face the crowds and just the big stages, you know, HBCU is not the biggest arena, but when you get to a big school like this, you got to just be mentally ready coming in. Rebound tapped out. They've got somebody free. Kyrie White lays it up and in at the other end off a long pass, and Savannah State leading 10-7. Well, one thing we see right away, we don't know how long it'll last, but... Uh, the Tigers are matching MU with speed. We're going to break it down in four quarters. It's going to be a, a TV timeout at 16, 12, 8, and 4. So I tell my guys, hey, man, we could play with anybody for four minutes. Let's just play with those four minutes. A lot of times we try to play the whole game in one possession. And uh, if we could get to the last four minutes, then it'll be a beautiful game. And then it's anybody's game. Make sure we take care of possession. We're working hard as hell on defense. We don't want to give it back too quick on offense. Okay? Tigers on three. One, two, three, Tigers. Horace Broadnax, first year at Savannah State, 2 and 28. That was 05 06. Last year they were 21 and 12. And I know they do it with defense and their quickness. You try to play the game to win, and you try to compete at the highest level. You try to show other people that you can't compete with them. And when you do show them a glimpse of you, you know, everybody in the room will be able to say, you know what, they fall hard. I feel like they probably looked at us upon, like, this will be an easy win. But as the game got tight, they probably realized that we was just that team that was not going to give up. When they see that we sticking in the game, it's like they, it wasn't expected. So when it happens, they kind of shot. Kicks up top, Spears with a 16-footer, good. And Savannah State has a one-point lead. We go through spurts and they be like, okay, we're playing real, real good right now. We can play with anybody. It's just the one rebound, the one box out, 
the one help over. It's always the little things. It's closing out. It's finishing off the first half, starting good in the second half. And a rebound foul on Savannah State, and Marquette is going to shoot two, leading by eight with 19-18 remaining. Guys, if we can rebound and get the basketball, things are good. I think the difference was definitely rebounding. Like They out-rebounded us. They was more aggressive on the boards, offensively and defensively. They had a couple of almost 300-pound players on their team. That's the team that I have you saw by the end of the night with just how physical they play. They probably try to weigh you down with their physical play. And that's something you can't do scouting report over. That's something you have to witness for yourself. It was kind of difficult boxing uh, those guys out because they were a little bit bigger than us. Obviously, they Big East caliber. Um, but we want to continue to play at a high level and continue to get better. Here's Blackman to the hoop. He gets the lane. Let's go. Savannah State hanging around. 8.28 left. Marquette up 50 to 40. Vander Blue struggles with the ball. He has it stolen away by Cedric Smith with Anderson back. Smith missed the layup, but he's fouled. And Savannah State, to really the surprise and almost shock of everybody, they've come from 19 down to nine down in about four minutes. Had to keep fighting. Come on now. We can't hang our hat on just being happy or satisfied with playing close with Marquette and had an opportunity. We made a run against Marquette, and we got to close out. At this point, I think we're a solid team. It's just whether we could get to that next level. Wasn't easy. Savannah State won't let it be easy. But in the end, the final, Marquette 71, Savannah State 51. And I'm telling you this, there haven't been many teams that play basketball like Marquette does. Savannah State defensively does it the same way. The final was 20 points. It was not easy. We took the L, but they knew deep down that this team wasn't just no pushover team. This team really was trying to fight to the end. That's the statement we left on that court. If we can go through adversity, being on the road, backs against the wall, and all that against big schools, when we come into our conference play, we know what it takes to get there. We know how to fight back. So when we're down or something, we're not timid, we're not, like we've been here before. But at the end of the day, if my athletic director told me I didn't have to do it, I still would want to play these type of uh, schools because we're so fortunate to get to the NCAA playoff. Guess what? We're going to play Marquette or Ohio State or University of Florida. So you want to be mentally prepared for these games. Closing the deal, that's the toughest part of being a championship team, closing the deal. Playing 40 damn hard minutes. I mean, we close. You can say we close, but that close is going to require unbelievable energy commitment to close that damn gap. Say Tigers like you mean it. One, two, three, Tigers!